Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Rivera, and I am in practice at Hoops Vision in Salt Lake City, Utah. And one of the key aspects of my practice, in fact, is ICL implantation. I'm one of the leading ICL implanters in the U.S. and have had extensive experience now over approximately 3,000 cases. So uh, what you're going to be seeing here, in fact, is a summary of a case that highlights something that you're definitely hearing more and more about with respect to ICLs, and that is the importance and the value of obtaining a, a preoperative UBM to measure sulcus to sulcus uh, distance for ICL selection. Previously we've uh, been using uh, white to white. Uh, white to white is the FDA indication but we have in fact found that a white to white measurement of an external landmark does not at all correlate to the internal size uh, and location where that ICL is going to be implanted. Now this was a patient whose surgery was done at a military installation the white-to-white uh, -white measurements were used for sizing of the ICL, and the ICL was implanted without any complications whatsoever during the case, which is what we see in these cases where there is an ICL mismatch. In fact, using white-to-white -white measurements, the proper ICL size, according to the online uh, software nomogram, indicated that this patient should receive a 13.7 ICL. Postoperatively, the patient actually had an elevated intraocular pressure and an excessive ICL vault. At this point, you know something is definitely out of the uh, routine and out of the ordinary. She was referred to a leading center for UBM measurements to determine whether there might have been any potential mismatch between the white-to-white -white measurements and sulcus-to-sulcus -sulcus measurements via UBM technology. Now that we can measure the sulcus to sulcus, this is the most important part of your evaluation in determining the ICL size for your proper patient. So the patient went on to uh, have the uh, sulcus to sulcus measured uh, via UBM, um, and the thought was, you know, UBM is UBM, an image is an image. Uh, I was actually brought in at this point and uh, took a look at the, uh, at the UBM images themselves, and was able to determine that in spite of the fact that you in fact had a good image, the image did not show the proper landmarks for the ICL selection. Now the key here is that a UBM is not a UBM and you really do have to specifically look for the actual landmarks themselves before you can say that it's adequate for ICL sizing. Now this is really interesting because while you would think that a UBM image um, once obtained gives you all the information you want, this case clearly illustrates that that is not in fact true. The initial image that was taken without the proper landmarks showed a sulcus to sulcus measurement of 11.7 millimeters. However, with the proper landmarks in place indicating a very good scan for ICL sizing, the sulcus to sulcus measurement was 12.2. And those are statistically significant differences. Uh, this led to a, an ICL selection of 12.6 millimeters that's two sizes uh, smaller than the initial choice that was based off of the white to white. Now, the way this case was resolved clearly highlights the value of UBM technology for ICL sizing. Having identified, in fact, that the vault was excessive, 1600 microns in size with an elevated intraocular pressure, the decision was made to explant the 13.7 millimeter ICL and exchange it for what the UBM nomogram clearly would have shown which was a 12.6 millimeter. The patient has subsequently done extremely well. She's over the top happy. And this case, again, just highlights the value of UBM technology prior to ICL uh, implantation. UBM technology is just extremely important. And we've already shown that in some papers that have been published. Uh, Paul Doherty, myself, and a number of other co-investigators and co-authors did a randomized prospective analysis of ICL sizing using UBM measurements. And in that case, we even went so far as to compare the UBM measurements with the white-to-whites. The UBM, uh, it, again, in a prospective fashion, were found to be so much more accurate and so much more precise in ICL selection to avoid exactly these types of complications. In my own experience, I literally use 100% UBM sizing to determine the proper ICL size. I do not implant any ICL unless I have UBM technology at my fingertips and, uh, and have obtained not just any UBM image, but one that shows the proper landmarks. It's highly important.